Let's travel back to a hot afternoon on July 24, 1847, around 2 p.m. Following an arduous 111-day journey with 148 members of the church who comprised the first party to head west, Brigham Young, then president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, sick and weak from mountain fever, entered Salt Lake Valley. Two days later, while recovering from his illness, Brigham Young led several members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and others on an exploring expedition. William Clayton recorded, About three quarters of a mile north of the camp, we arrived on a beautiful table of land, level and nicely sloping to the west. While surveying the spot with the group, Brigham Young suddenly stopped and stuck his cane in the ground, exclaiming, Here shall stand the temple of our God. One of his companions was Wilford Woodruff, who said this statement went through him like lightning, and he drove a branch into the ground to mark the spot made by President Young's cane. Forty acres were selected for the temple, and it was decided that the city should be laid out perfectly square north and south, east and west, with the temple being the center spot. At General Conference in April 1851, members of the church voted unanimously to sustain a motion to build a temple to the name of the Lord. Two years later, the site was dedicated by Heber C. Kimball in a public ceremony attended by several thousand saints, and ground was broken for the foundation of the Salt Lake Temple. A few months later, on April 6, the massive cornerstones of the Salt Lake Temple were laid and dedicated with elaborate ceremonies that included a color guard and bands and a procession led by church leaders from the old tabernacle to the temple site, where remarks and prayers were offered at each of the four cornerstones. At the groundbreaking ceremony, President Young recalled that he had seen a vision when he first set foot upon the ground as they surveyed the valley floor, stating, I knew then, just as well as I now know, that this was the ground on which to erect a temple. It was before me. Ten years later, Brigham Young offered the following prophetic insight at General Conference. I want to see the temple built in a manner that it will endure the millennium. That this is not the only temple we shall build. There will be hundreds of them built and dedicated to the Lord. This temple will be known as the first temple built in the mountains by the Latter-day Saints. I want that temple to stand as a proud monument of the faith, perseverance, and industry of the saints of God in the mountains. In reviewing this brief history, I am in awe of the seership of Brigham Young. First, his ensuring that to the extent possible and using construction methods available at that time and place, the Salt Lake Temple would be built in a manner to endure throughout the millennium. And second, his prophesying of the growth of future temples worldwide, even to number them in the hundreds, 